Blue screens, they can be hard to troubleshoot, but I wanna go through all the steps that you should be doing to kind of discover what's going wrong with your Windows instance, because at any time, you could just be doing something and then all of a sudden, this happens. It is one of the most aggravating things, and sometimes you just don't know what causes it. So the first thing you should do, obviously when you boot back into Windows after your blue screen, check your event viewer. Right click your start menu, and this works on Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, or you could just type start and then type event viewer right here. Select that, launch into event viewer. This is something that's really important to know about Click administrative events. This is something that's defaulted. Anytime you have something really going wrong with your system, typically it's gonna be listed here. Like you can see a whole bunch of DNS error events. This is when I was working on my network card and doing some shenanigans with the network. Uh, so this was problematic and obviously I've fixed it since then. But what you'll see is you'll see like a hard error. And usually this is like a kernel power error right in here. You'll see a bunch of distributive com. This is actually pretty normal for Windows. But you might see something like this, Windows Update Client. Why is it erroring out? I should probably look into that type of error. And you really kind of want to clean up a lot of these errors. Here's an iSCSI error, so I should check into that. But the big thing out of these errors that we're looking for is usually you'll have an unexpected shutdown error. Right before that unexpected shutdown error, you should see some warnings and errors. You want to look into those warnings and errors and figure out what exactly is going on with them. But a lot of times in the case of blue screens, it just doesn't show anything. Or it might just be stuff that doesn't matter. Like this right here, probably not going to be the end of the world uh, with a lot of these errors and warnings that I'm seeing. But if there's nothing close to that unexpected shutdown error, it's probably an under lurking device driver or, or old driver issue. There's a lot of things that can happen to cause these errors to go on. So First, check Event Viewer, see what those errors are, see if you can't alleviate or maybe even Google those errors to fix them. But what happens when you can't do anything about that? Well, let's look into the actual dump file. I had an old piece of software or hardware that was actually the root cause, but how did I get to it? First, I came here and downloaded a free tool uh, down in here where it says who crashed. Download this, just get the free home edition and then launch it. So I'm gonna just do who crashed and see what's going on with it. And you just click analyze. This will actually go out, find any Windows dump files you have, and then display a report on the screen. You just scroll down a little bit. You have some information right here, how much memory and just your system in general. But the crash dump analysis is really the thing that shows us what's happening. Now this right here is an older error, obviously from May. Uh, fourth is the last time I've blue screened this uh, particular Windows box. But I had one on my stream PC that I used to record, stream on, and I had literally probably 20 to 25 different devices hooked up to that specific machine, whether it be PCIe or going through the USB ports. I think it has about 12 different USB ports, all with stuff plugged into it. And it's hard to troubleshoot, especially if Event Viewer doesn't give us any clues, but this usually does give us clues. Specifically, it says, hey, this module usually causes this error. So I know this executable probably caused this error to happen, but a lot of times it'll actually be a driver DLL that uh, you need to look into. So if you do see that, go into your device manager, figure out what device might be causing it. Usually it's something you've added to the system. Now in my case, I had like a sound uh, box in here and I, it, was, it was causing some issues. So let me just go properties. And then what you do is come over to driver, driver details, and then you can see all the DLLs and sys files that this is using right here. Another thing to do when you're trying to troubleshoot some of these extra devices or maybe some generic devices you bought off Amazon, they're very, very commonly giving blue screens. Uh, look to see when the driver date is. If it's something really old in the past, uh, in my case, I definitely, that was one red flag I saw was I was using an art voice channel and the driver they had out that was downloaded was last updated in 2015. And that was immediately, I thought, oh my God, that was right when Windows 10 or maybe right even before Windows 10 got launched. 
So that was a uh, immediate red flag. Hey, that, that could cause some blue screens. But that's how you would do it. Just come into driver details, look at these, and also look and pay close attention to the driver date. If it's more than three, four years old on the driver date, that's something that you might see if there's a driver update for. Now, in my case, I went ahead and uh, went over to there, obviously checked to see if there's newer drivers. I came down into our downloads, and I'm just going to go ahead and download this uh, software so you can see it. And you can see this driver was actually modified in 2015. This executable is literally six years old, and this was causing blue screens on my stream PC. So obviously this isn't an updated driver, nothing I actually would bother installing. So what do you do if you have a tool, like I love my art voice channel, <laughs> it's just their USB is trash. And I wanted to figure out a different workaround, or maybe I still wanted to use that USB, try to limit its function. Uh, the big thing you can do in this instance, uh, come into like sound settings, and this is actually the newer sound settings in Windows 11, which uh, I'm not a big fan of. But let's go into control and come into our old sound settings. And usually what I would do is, let's say I was having NVIDIA problems with this, I would just go ahead, disable these. There's no reason to have them enabled if I'm not using them. And if it's not doing playback, which this wasn't, it was actually coming into it as a recording device. So obviously I didn't need the playback portion. So I just went ahead and did that. Another thing you can do if it's a sound related thing, again, think about limiting down uh, what that application can do. And also try and think of how things were designed back when that driver was made. One specific thing I was thinking of is right here, exclusive mode where apps can take exclusive control over the device. This is something that maybe you want to just go ahead and disable and actually let this uh, basically be controlled by the system and not applications. That's less things touching that problematic driver and that might actually fix your issue as well. In my case, it did not and I had to just figure out a workaround and I ended up just going from an optical cable into a sound card that I made. But that is a different video. I just wanted to kind of show you a couple troubleshooting tips here for this blue screen. But I thought, hey, uh, this could help somebody out there that's running into blue screens and just kind of beating their head against the wall. One, troubleshoot that blue screen, figure out what driver's causing it, because a lot of times it's driver related or actual device relation, and then disable it or update it. You never know. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.